episode 80 of From Everyone. I'm here with Living Weary. Uh, my goal, my sarcastic goal that I gave myself is to learn something from everyone. And today we're continuing that journey with you guys. So I appreciate y'all joining me today. Thank you for making the trip out here. Um, yes, want to go around and say our first name, say what we do in the band, just kind of get that boring shit out of the way, and then we'll dive into all the fun stuff here. So Steven, I will start with you, my man. Um, I'm, my name is Steven Bossy. Uh, I, um, I, I'm a, the writer and singer-songwriter of Living Weary, and I, um, uh, I, I play uh, guitar, rhythm guitar and sing Heck yeah. lead vocals. I'm Steph. I play bass guitar, and I do backing vocals, harmonies, and some screams in Living Weary. I'm Drew. I play lead guitar. And I'm Brandon Lanfear, and I play drums. Beautiful. I haven't listened to a podcast, and I hear like 10 voices, and I don't know who anyone is. <laughs> so let's just get out of the way. Make life easy. Yep. Uh, I am a hot mess right now. I'm just getting back from uh, working a festival down in Maryland for OAR. Oh. Oh, uh, and it was a very cool weekend, but I felt like I was working all day and editing all night. And at this point, I'm like, just haven't slept <laughs> enough for a couple of days in a row and trying to be human. So I'm very you, grateful bro. to be here and like hanging out and celebrating, having fun. Yep. Uh, I know you guys have an album coming out very soon. We have a music video coming out very soon. Uh, yes, the full album. I believe you guys recorded it all with Chris Paquette. Yeah. Is that all accurate? That's yes. right, yep. You guys have been working with him for a while now, right? It feels like that relationship's been going back for a while. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a few years. Um, we've kind of been, like, not, like, so super, you know, in the spotlight. Like, we've kind of just been, like, recording a lot. And, um, I don't know, things have been difficult the past few years, just, like, you know, life, um, but, you know, th this album is going to be, like, kind of just, you know, my mind, you know, in the, from the past few years, like, things I've gone through and uh, challenges and, uh, you know, heartbreak, whatever, um, depression, stress, you know, just stress of, you know, every day, you know, getting up, work, you know, whatever, it's like, it's a challenge at times, you know. Yeah. Um, it's real. I think that's the, one of the good things about it, though, is that, like, I think we like to write songs about all the things that, like, I don't know, it's like a, almost a glorification of, like, bad things happening to us sometimes. And yeah. I think when it comes from a real place, a much more genuine thing of, like, no, this isn't, like, a salacious story they're writing to try and write about the thing people want to hear about. It's like, this is my life. This is what I went through. This is what you are getting. Uh, and I think that yeah, comes through, yeah. and I think it's like, visually comes through to me also when I watch you guys perform. It's like... Yeah, this is real. There is nothing fraudulent happening. This is actually what you want to do. This is where you want to be. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I think working with Chris for a while is an interesting thing. And as a someone who like also works with bands, I'm always wondering like what makes him good at his job. Like, what do we like work about working with him? Why we stuck with him? Because uh, I feel like that helps me learn about how to make my own self better. At this, yeah. So, um, yeah. Ever since we uh, started uh, working with Chris, you know, he's um, he's helped me a lot personally grow as a drummer. You know, he's always kind of pushing me. And he's uh, he's pulled the best out of us, um, you know. He's very very professional, um, and he's uh, he's always pushing us forward, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you he know. has good suggestions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris is, you know, he's the best of the best, you know. Um, and uh, couldn't be happier working with him. The album sounds great, and uh, yeah. You know. But I can attest to that. Like from the beginning of recording, like Brandon, like. He just, I feel like he hits with more uh, purpose now, for that matter, like, and yeah. um, a little more power, and I think that... Yeah. Uh, um, he's come a long way yeah. as a drummer. And, and I think that Chris helped bring that out of him. Yeah. Like, I, I used um, to hit the drums, like, so uh, lightly. Like, Chris would be like, hit that shit, you know? <laughs> like, fucking, like, get yeah. in there and, like, you know, do it up. And uh, I think that's kind of like, you know... Yeah. How do you feel like he helped you? Where I'm always fat, like, like... Uh, I feel like you have to communicate that so finely in the studio. And there's something That's on true. set that I'm always struggling with of like, I don't want, like, I want to make sure we're building people up. And in the studio, the same thing. It's like, we want to give constructive feedback because we want to make you better. Where if he would just be in there like, hey, you're not hitting, like, you're bad. Then yeah. it's like, oh, we're going to get a bad outcome from this. Like, it's yeah. very delicate to, like, say it well. Like, yeah, how did he communicate that to you in a way that it resonated with you? Also, Thanks. this is Jack. Aww. Jack is my cat that we can hear screaming in the background. Super uh, cute kitty. Yeah, he's the best. He likes to chat. Uh, my dad joke is that, like, I have a podcast and he likes talking way more than I do. <laughs> Come <laughs> sit. Come sit. But, yes, he'll be here screaming. But, yes. How do you feel like Chris made you a better drummer? Yeah, what was that process? How did that unfold? Um, so, you know, I think, uh, you know, he's always... Uh, like positive yeah. about it you know like he wasn't like uh you know um you know 
putting me uh like sometimes I'd kind of get like locked up or something in a part, or I'd have to like you know do like I'd be playing the same part over and over trying to get the right take. Um, but he kind of just uh, he pushed me to try um, you know different and more complex things, and uh, you know we we wouldn't stop until we got what we wanted, you know. And uh, yeah. he uh, yeah, I, I think just the uh, the positive nature, and uh, you know he he wants to get. Uh, he doesn't want to settle for anything less. Yeah, than, kind of just do it uh, over and over. Yeah. yeah. He's not you afraid mean. to, you know, tell us what bothers him about anything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if like, there's anything that, like. I'll legit be, like, you know, doing a scream or something. He's like, I think you, you can do that a little, a little more, a little more powerful. Like, a little. I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he pulls the best out, you know. Like, at first, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit, like, sensitive to, uh, Know, some of the stuff, but maybe it's because we I all are. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think I, it's a very normal thing. Like, yeah. if someone came up to me and was like, "Hey, I know, like, yeah, I know you've been doing this your whole life. I know you spent every moment of your life thinking about this thing. Do right. it better." It's like, no, fuck you. Like, yeah. I'm doing my best here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I feel you. I think we all have a natural tendency there. Yeah, yeah. But then I started to, uh, you know, I realized that it's, uh, you know, it's his job. You know, and hmm. he's great at it. You yeah. know, he's, uh, he's, he's helped us a lot along the way. You know. Uh, and Steph, you also mentioned like suggestions and input. Is there a spot on the album where like you felt like a suggestion really came through? Is there a song that he really helped refine? Like, yeah, what stands out as a like a memorable suggestion that he passed along to um, you guys? Um, put me on the spot. <laughs> um, no, I just like something specific. Or yeah, it doesn't have to be specific. I don't know why I forced you into that rabbit hole. No, it's okay. Um, there's this really cool harmony I do on. Time I'll find the light and I'll survive. A little sneak peek. Sparkle. Yeah. Um, Sparkle. Sparkle. Oh, yeah. And like he helped me figure out the harmony and like harmonies are hard sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably what I struggle with or the most. Correct picture frames. Oh, one, yeah. one of those two. Yeah. But just like, yeah, he suggested um, this really cool harmony and just worked with me until I got it. Yeah. And then like played it on the piano. Cause some, you know, I got to play it out sometimes to hear it. Um, he, he like played it out, played it out, played it out until I nailed it. So I think that that really stood out to me because I was kind of getting frustrated too. He's like, no, you'll get it. Yeah, he's patient. Yeah. Yeah. The studio is the most frustrating place. I have so much respect <laughs> for you guys going in there. Every time I'm in the studio with a band, it's like, I don't know if I could do it. I think by the third take, it'd be like, it, that's the one we're using. I don't have time. And well, that's the yeah. thing. Like, you start to, like, not really, but you, in a way, you start to, like, hate the song. You're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Because then yeah. you go home, and it's still in your head. But it's cool because you get to hear it come together. And then once it's out, you get to see what people feel. And then, like, you get to play it. And that's a whole different experience. But, um... It's good to nail it in there, to hear it over and over. Absolutely. I should have mentioned up top, or I meant to mention up top, that you mentioned the show coming up. Uh, there is also an album release show on uh, October 24th in Norwich, Connecticut. There's an album release show. Uh, where is that yes. show happening? It's a Strange Brew Pub. Hell yes. Do you have another band you're playing with? Um, uh, uh, tax Collectors yes. and Harlots Beautiful. and uh, Lost Soul. Oh, yes. Hell yes. This is when you guys have played before? The venue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Strange Brew is kind of like, you know, where we all met. Or yeah. It's we we all have our own stories about it. It's uh, Drew, start it's us a, off. What is your story about it? Yeah, what makes it special to you? Um, just immediately going in for an open mic, it, it's just every, it's a listening crowd. Everybody's supportive. And, like, the yeah. people that run it, the people that play there are nice. Um, I remember my first open mic, I was the last one to go, and no one was there. And then my second one, Steven, was the last one to go. And I'm like, I'm going to stick around and see what this guy has to... That's awesome. You know, what, what he has to say. And then we just started talking afterwards about all sorts of stuff, like making beats. And Hell we, yes. we just hit it off, so that's how we met. Hell yes. Uh, what, do we, what were you performing at the open mic? Uh, my own original songs. Okay. Like guitar and vocals. Yeah, guitar, okay, and okay, acoustic okay. guitar and vocals. Yeah. Hell yes. And then for other piece of context, me, what time is this when the open mic is ending? Is it like a two? It, it was like twelve, twelve thirty or something. Yeah, yeah. Like so There's a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. It goes late. They have sign ups, you know, and right. people come in, sign up. They have an acoustic open mic every Tuesday, and then like an electric open jam. 
Thursdays. Is that um, something y'all are frequently doing? We, um, uh, I we used to go there. Of... Like Stephen and I used to go there every Tuesday night. That's actually where I rekindled with Stephen. Very um, cool. Okay. We used to play shows back in the day, like solo acoustic artists, and um, I probably last saw him in like 2015, and then like 2018, saw him at Strange Brew, and that's where we rekindled. We were both doing an open mic, and hell yeah. 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 I didn't know like the open mic music scene was so prominent. I didn't know that it's kind of it big really in is. Connecticut. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I actually met Steven at an open mic. It wasn't uh Strange Brew. Um is actually uh the, Westerly. Yeah, it? the Knickerbocker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and like the, the New England scene, it's just kinda like Yeah. What us songwriters do. It's great to meet know. people. It, it's you know? where you go to find, you know the people who are drawn to the same things that you want to do musically, and then, you know, something like like this happens where we're all, you know, working towards the same end of putting out an album and gigging and, That's you know, so moving cool. forward with music. I, I wish there was, like, a video equivalent of that, where I think one thing I dislike about my job is it always feels like I'm on an island, and that's kind mm -hmm. of the nature of directors. Like, there's only one of us on set at a time, yeah. and, like, Band members tend to find each other. Like you end up with a core group of people, or even like the open mic scene. It's like you can all go perform. Where it's like, I guess people, you could have a video showcase, but it's like I wouldn't go watch <laughs> people show their stuff all. Like it's just not what I'm into. And I, yeah. I guess it's a thing that people do. And I guess if I'm complaining about it, then I should take action and go do the thing instead of whining. Make but a like, whole different <laughs> event for directors or but, something. Yeah, it's like it's the the creative process though is the, the what doesn't exist. Like you can't like edit with someone in the same way that you can jam with someone. <laughs> exactly. Like we can sit in a room together, and I have done this with friends, and it is kind of a nice thing to answer questions of each other, bounce ideas, or but like it doesn't like get into the same flow state that I think perform with your friends as and there's like yeah a bonding thing that happens there where it's like editing is always like parallel and you can yeah. kind of be together but yeah it lacks is like collaborative so I'm like envious you guys have this thing that you go to every week to go like yeah meet other folks like you guys yeah uh, are you still going to them frequently is it still like a regular thing y'all are involved um with? yeah I, I mean I try Bring to go just a little bit closer for me I try to go you know Thank you, yeah. when I can at times um not all the time though um i used to go a lot more um performing like living weary stuff or like covers yeah, yeah living weary usually like i'll go there like just solo sometimes or just you know play I feel the songs like back when we both didn't have bands we were going there more often like when we were still solo artists we were going there yeah. more often um but they have shows all the time like we're going there a lot just in general yeah, that's awesome. I, He's I been do, going. I do go because yeah, like, I do write my own music and I yep. play my own songs, but I also promote the band and the things that we have coming up. I don't really play our uh, songs without Steven because, you know, he's vocal. So mm -hmm. um, I'll play my songs and I'll, I'll tell everyone, you know, what we're up to um, because it's a very good crowd. It's a listening audience. Yeah. Everybody's really supportive. Yeah. Um, so I go to that one and some other ones. Some of the other ones are more like, um, hey, Drew, you want to come up and play piano for this song? And I'm like, okay, what's the song? <laughs> yep. I don't know, or, or percussion or whatever. And then uh, it just happens. It's, you know, yep. it's, it's fun. That's yeah. another part of music it's that fun. I just it, don't it's no pressure. understand. <laughs> it, it's no pressure and it's fun. You just get to go and do whatever you want for, you know. 15 minutes and if you mess stage. up, like it's it's, it's cool. It's if so you mess chill. Up, it's yeah. yeah, it's a it's a live open practice mics. With your friends. Yeah, ex they're, yeah, they're like a live practice kind of. Mm -hmm. Like you play three, four songs, and yeah, you hear that? Of, I did. I don't know what part of know, my body that was, um, but and yeah, no Strange way. Brew, the one that we're playing at on the 24th. Yeah, they're they've always been very um, like have a they have a lot of variety of very music. Eclectic. Um, which I always liked, um, just a lot of different music, like there's not just one artist, there's not just one type of music, mm -hmm. it's just kind of a lot, of, you know, anyone can go there, I'm, really do whatever they want. I'm also wondering if it's like made you better musicians, and I guess part of this is like by being on stage, uh, but it's also, uh, I've been trying to make myself read more, where I feel like I don't like consume a lot of stuff, so I'm trying to read as like, okay, this is a good thing people do, this is a good way to I've been trying to do that too. Uh, <laughs> so the way I do this is I set a timer for 10 minutes, and I sit with my book for 10 that's minutes. That's so good, and, that's a good idea. And then move on, so like, sometimes I read one page for 10 minutes, but it's like, whatever. But I you still try. did it. It's so hard sometimes yeah. to like, know what you're reading. Like, yes. I feel that like, 
one page for 10 minutes, I'm like, oh. yes. Yeah, reading comprehension has never been a strong to the mind, you know? Uh, the reason I bring it up is because there's a book called uh, Outliers, and it's about, like, exceptions. And one of the things covered in this book is the Beatles. Uh, it talks about how before the Beatles ever came here, they were playing, like, bar shows in the yeah, UK. Yeah, dude. Like, and they were playing night from, like, after night. 7 p.m. to, like, 3 or 4 a.m. And yep. just, like, the amount of hours they would have had on stage makes them, like, so far and above what any other band of time is doing. And, like, obviously, they're also brilliant. There's also other factors that go into it. But, like, that's one of the reasons that they come here and take off is because by the time they got here, they were so far, like, so beyond every other musician. Yeah. And I'm thinking of you guys, like, I think a common thing I hear with bands is, like, oh, we don't have enough stage time. We're only playing one show. Or it's, like, you don't want to play 100 shows in Connecticut because then no one's going to come to any of the shows. Yeah. Like, you want to keep them special. So it's like, how do you get more stage time without diluting the living weary Open brand? Open mics. And this is a perfect solution to it. Yeah. Do you feel like it has made you guys better musicians? Like, is that a, an accurate correlation there? Where you guys have gotten more comfortable and yeah, just better at what you're doing? Yeah. It's, um, you know, it, it's simple enough, you know, to just be able to go out, you know, if you want to and just play like three or four songs. You know, it's not like a full set where you have mm -hmm. to like really practice for it. You can just... You know, go mess around quickly. Just you know, play three or four songs, and yeah, it's it's like a, it's a good way to um, yeah, like get you know used to you know playing on stage and mm -hmm. in front of people. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, I think it really helps me with the people thing. I'll be honest. Yeah, like, it definitely helped me um, perform better for sure, and because that's practice, you know. But it definitely helped me, um, I guess, being more personable with the crowd and like. Um, not being so nervous and kind of just being more open and yeah, um, yeah. I look Easier. at it as a reward for for like all the work I put in that no one sees and like that's my time to do whatever I want and that's you know cool. you know just have fun and it's a, a reward because as musicians you know ultimately we want to be on stage and we want like other people to want to do what we're doing and like what we're doing. So whenever I'm on stage, I'm just happy that I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. And, and, in the and moment. it's just, yeah, I'm in the moment. And uh, sometimes I blank out even, <laughs> you, you know, in between songs mm -hmm. just because, um, you know, that's what we want to do it for ultimately is to, to be yeah. on stage. Yeah. So that's the reward for all the hard work. We even all, if you're doing it for free, it's yeah. still fun. We all want to be seen. And you gotta I think love like, it. Yeah, and I think that's a, an innate part of any of the art, my own art included in this, is like, yeah, there is, like, I, I like to joke that I like being behind the camera way more than in front of it. And it's like, that's true, but I also like being on the YouTube screen. It doesn't really matter where I was in relation to the yeah. camera. Like, it is still my art that you're viewing. So it's kind of like a, yeah, a dishonest thing almost. Of like, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't want people to see the thing. And I forget that, yeah, with you guys, there's a, innate pride there where I think I tend to think of musicians as like purists like oh you just want to play the thing and I always forget that it's like no we also want to be on stage we want people yeah, to see we, the thing and, like, and to hear it you yeah. know hear what we have to say and, for sure like and and I, th I think it's beautiful you guys are then being able to like have such a positive tie to the venue that you get to play the album release show that's a really cool place to like yeah. have all this positive energy all the camaraderie you guys have built all the all the yeah 12 30 <laughs> last spot where no one else is there kind of moments yeah, it's beautiful it, it's a perfect spot for the uh for the album release, you know, it's like kind of like the home base for us, I feel like, in a way, yeah. you know, a lot of uh, friendly faces. Like every time we, I go there, every time we're there, it's like, I, you know, it's like a family there. It really is like just all the uh, all the local bands and, uh, you know, everybody comes out to support you yeah. know, each other. So I love that. And the yeah. owner, too, like himself, uh, the owner, uh, Jay Chase. Wallace, yep. he's just he's a musician himself. He's a drummer um, and he's even like, you know. Uh, uh, played drums for some bands for some nights he's done but he's just he's all about the music and yeah. um, he's very supportive if you want to play there um, and he welcomes it's like a very welcoming place he welcomes everybody but he's great I my burning question that feels slightly improper is I feel like with open mics there's probably a lot of musicians like you guys who are competent musicians or good musicians uh, I feel like for me that's the less fun set to watch. I feel like watching someone get up there and just <laughs> be the worst thing ever is oh, yeah. sometimes more entertaining. Uh, in very vague terms, is there a set you've ever seen that is like so horrifically bad that it sticks in your memory? Is everyone like kind of good, or has there been a time that you're like, oh my god, I will never forget <laughs> watching this There's... thing happen? definitely been uh, <laughs> more than one i mean yeah. i mean you know sometimes please don't name names please be vague but i'm sometimes also sometimes people are drunk you know it's a bar yeah. and they get up there it happens. 
Yeah. You know. I, I like stop in a song and I, I mess up the lyrics and I'll say, oh, fuck, man, I just screwed that one up. And I talk to the audience yeah. and then I just go back into it mm-hmm. because, you know, it's that uh, candid moment that yes. shows, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you practice, you still can mess up at any point. It's still live performing. I remember one. That's a reasonable mistake. I want an unreasonable mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I feel um, like oh, I, I do remember one, um, and I think it was just like, was just like practice or like um, it was just not the right crowd. But it, and it wasn't. But this is interesting. It wasn't um, um, music. It was comedy. This guy went up to do That's some a comedy, tough one. Yeah. and everyone who's Too used bomb. to like open mics was just like, what? Oh, this guy's going up to do comedy and. <laughs> His so jokes. there are comedy open mics, but you don't do it in the middle yeah, of a music yeah. open mic. It's, it was just, yeah, oh, it was just weird. There. And his jokes were just, like, not hitting. And uh, <laughs> and then basically he was just like, all right, well, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll see you later. Thanks, whatever. He's going to kill Tony. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, um, but there's been no music ones that were too horrible. Like, you can, not that I can remember anyway. I, uh, I had some comedians on here, and we had a very long conversation about how, like, you can't force comedy on people. They're doing comedy. Someone who doesn't exactly, expect comedy that's what is, happened. like, yeah, is very insulting <laughs> and aggressive and a horrible idea. And it sounds like it was exactly that. Of some, yeah, a crowd that was not at all ready or interested in comedy. Yeah. And some poor guy went up there and misunderstood the open mic name. Like, wait for the poetry night, because I'm sure they've done that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or, or, like, yeah. or, like, the slam night or, like, the the, I don't know. They have open. They have yes. so many things. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. Any other ones that come to mind or I can happily move on? Yeah, I feel bad telling bad stories, but also sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I feel mean already, but it was the audience. Yes. It was yeah. the situation. Sometimes things don't go well. That's part of the fun of our world. You yeah. got to clap no matter what, though. You of, know? Course. It was, yeah. of course. Of course. Um, hell yes. Uh, in relation to the album, we also have a music video coming out for Focus. Uh, that comes out October 10th, so I think this will be out early next week. Uh, so if you're listening on the day this comes out, there's a day or two until the music video comes out. Uh, yeah. Where does that song start? So I know, yeah, I know we ended up filming that in Steven's house, but yes, where does that song start? Is that also written with Chris? Is it written in the studio? Is there like a so, old demo? Yeah, what's kind of the story there? It was, um, <clears throat> so yeah, we recorded it with Chris. Um, I think we kind of jammed that one, you know, we kind of, oh, yeah. like, kind of practice. Like, it, it came up like on the spot, you know. I think I it like was I, kind of um, an on the spot, like some of our songs. We kind of just, like, I would kind of just jam, like, sometimes not even with the full band. I just jam with Brandon or whatever. And I record, record on the phone. On my phone. And, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I just kind of random, you know, stuff. Some of it might not even have lyrics to it, but then I end up liking the melody or whatever of my vocals. So I just, you know, I end up writing the lyrics for it. Um, and then a uh, song just comes out of it basically um and uh yeah, i think that's how focus came out um it feels like a very like organic songwriting process I yeah like lot, it's almost yeah. like freestyling or something but it's like i mean it basically is just like rock music i guess you know i kind of just write my but, parts yeah. i'm like yeah. cool they they bring the song like steven brings a song essentially like he you know he'll bring the rhythm the lyrics and he'll be like here it is. Usually they jam together first. Mm-hmm. So they'll bring the song and then uh, we just write our parts. We kind of just jam it out. And yeah, it's definitely a process. For um, sure. But, uh, you know, I'm, I couldn't be happier with uh, with this one. I'm really excited about yeah. this uh, the song in particular, the video. I feel like the song flows. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, now that we've had uh, Andrew with us, it's been fucking... You know, it's been awesome. It's been uh, we've been you know headed in the in the right direction for sure, and uh, you know what he's brought to the, t- to the table. Um, yeah, this video it's uh, it's, cool. it's fucking sick. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to share. Thanks to you, I mean, Peter. The, the video quality is fantastic. Uh, you yeah. know, I I just can't wait to get the link and start spamming everyone because I right. I want them to see how great it is. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, I think it's well shot. The, the concept's cool. Um, the song's catchy. The song is really good. Like Chris did a great job with mm-hmm. with the levels for all the songs on the album. Um, everything sounds very consistent. So uh, 
Yeah, I can't wait till the thing comes out. You know, it's gonna it's gonna rule. Um, before we move on from the writing process, uh, are y'all pen and paper lyrics? Are you writing on your phone? What is the lyric writing process? I'm always curious about like the physical thing that you're writing on. Sometimes I just write on my phone. Sometimes I'll write it down in a notebook or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just depends, really. Whatever, like, I don't know, anything really, like. Um, like, if I don't have a piece of paper near me and I have lyrics in my head or whatever, mm-hmm. I'll just put them down on my phone. Is um, pen and paper your preference, then? Mm, I mean, I, I definitely like to possibly, you know, get them down on, like, a physical thing. I mean, that would be, like, obviously, like, it's probably better to do that, I feel like. But um, I don't know, you know, I mean, however, really... It ends up happening is for me. I'm classic pen and paper mm-hmm. uh, personally. Like when I uh, write my parts, um, and once I solidify them, like I write them down um, because of my brain can't. I can't remember. Like, yeah, I just can't. And um, especially like you know, being multiple bands and like just. You know, and all the media we consume now. But anyway, I have to write it down. Like, even the lyrics, like, the lyrics that I do, the harmonies that I do, I write down what parts I'm singing. Because most of the time, I just want to sing all the lyrics because they're good and they're catchy. So I have to, like, all right, these are my lyrics. That's the part I write. And um, I'm classic pen and paper. That way, I have something physical. I'm a sucker for pen and paper. I feel like I can't think, like, digitally. I, like, no, my, for real. Um, so like, I'll miss the cut for that. I, yeah, I can't either. Hell yes. Um, the other part of that that I thought was fascinating is the, like, first-person uh, rig they put on yes. Steven there. Uh, so, Steven, oh, I know yeah. this narrative kind of came from your idea of being trapped in a basement in the blue light. Is that, yeah, where does that story come from? Uh, where did that um, narrative idea come from for you? It's like, uh, it's almost like, I don't know, I've always had this, like, I, I get, you know, crazy dark visuals in my mind a lot, just, like, um, arti- very artistic um, types of things. But, like, sometimes I just feel like I'm so trapped in my head, you know, I, I can't get out. It's, like, kind of uh, that in a sense. And there's, like, this crazy, like... Um, different world inside of my head that's just really dark you know it's like um it's kind of like I, I guess that's sort of where it came from and it's like um i was just kind of thinking like like the blue you know door is like a, a door into another dimension sort of like a portal almost um and uh i don't know i thought it it was a cool idea I loved it, yeah, and I like doing it from the first person because I think it makes it human. I think it's kind of an interesting spin then on this story. Uh, the part of this that kind of makes me laugh is y'all having to like watch us film this thing. I feel like you're already laughing at us saying like I I love the things I do that must have looked ridiculous from the outside, and that is close to the top of my list of like, yeah, I knew what I was doing. I think Stephen probably kind of knew what he was doing, maybe a little bit one degree less than I did, and y'all must have been having a great time trying to figure out what the fuck was happening as you were watching for the corner. I was just I was like I'm so excited to see what this looks like, but it was just also funny like <laughs> trying to see Stephen like maneuver with that thing. Um, <laughs> You know yeah. how, like, when I, – I don't mean to, you know, allude uh-huh. you to this sort of situation, but you know, like, when dogs have a cone on their head and, like, they can't, like <laughs> – it was kind of like that at first, which I totally understand because he was also being careful. But I was like, oh, man, this is so funny, and I can't wait to see the footage because it's going to look so <laughs> sick. But this looks so ridiculous right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for people listening, I guess it's, like, like a bike like a bike helmet mm-hmm. that looks like – like has a football face mask on it and the camera's Camera. mounted to like the football face in mask. In front of you, yeah. Um, yeah, what about you guys? What was the experience watching that all come together? <laughs> um, you know, it's, it was definitely a, f- a fun time. You know, I feel like whenever we do a video, it's always, uh, it's always a fun, uh, a fun day. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, watching Steven kind of like, you know, crawl up the stairs and all that, like do all that kind of like, you know, weird, uh, like, Everything that he was doing, I don't want to give too much away, yep. but uh, you know, all those things uh, he was um, doing, you know, 
uh, it was. I don't know. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but it was just the... That would normally be so normal, and it just didn't <laughs> yeah, look normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it will, yeah, it's like, like a, you know, the magic of, uh, you know, video <laughs> and editing. And yeah. For sure. Because, um, you know, it just came out amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's yeah, the other yeah. hard part of one of those. Is it's like, I understand it's going to work, but I also understand the footage is like, I know where I'm going to start and end the yeah. footage. And if you don't know that, then watching the footage back is like... I don't know what we see in here. Right. So it always feels like a really tough, like, hey, trust me, this one's going to work. Yeah. Uh, and I try and build the demo. Yeah, I think I sent over some footage of me. Yeah, me wearing the helmet. I think actually playing with the cat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that you guys had some sense, like, okay, this is kind of what we're putting together. Yeah. Uh, but I understand. And then, Steven, for you, wearing that helmet, yeah, what was yeah, that experience it was, like? It was very uncomfortable. <laughs> very yeah, heavy, probably heavy. Very heavy on my head. Um the camera was really weighing me down. Um, I feel like a GoPro maybe would have been a lot lighter, but I mean, it was. Uh, it wouldn't have looked as good. Yeah. Yes. GoPros are my best friend and my worst enemy because they are so convenient, but yeah, they just can't quite emulate no. what Wait. my camera can. It's like, I feel like I've invested so heavily in the camera, it's like, why would I not use it if I can? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, GoPro certainly would have saved us a lot of hassle in the process. You took one for the team, Steven. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, it was very entertaining. It was <laughs> definitely uh, a challenge, but it was it was fun. It was uh, a lot of fun doing, you know, just the whole video. Um, you know, just figuring out what we wanted to do. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was a challenge, but it was definitely. Um, it's. I mean, it's always fun, you know, doing videos. Definitely being artsy and. Um, yeah, kinda. we've had a couple of adventures under our belt. I'm thinking back to the uh, was it whispers in the yeah. furniture shop, yep. uh, which was the coolest set ever. Like the location, <laughs> like looked incredible. It was so Great. easy once we were in there. Uh, but yeah, it was just full of characters and all yeah. kinds of oh my God. all kinds of delays Amazing and people. hassles and yeah. yeah issues with parking, and getting move in, stuff around. Oh, I know. <laughs> but the everything. end result though it came out was, so good. I know. Uh, it was a good one. It's unique. Uh, definitely. Before that, there was vanished here. Uh, vanished. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this actually. Uh, the two of you that were there. Uh, I like cut myself so bad as we were loading in, and I still have, like a scar here on my wrist. <laughs> and it was one of those where like. I was like, fuck, we're, I got here 10 minutes ago and I might literally have to go get stitches right now. But like, I didn't want to deal with that. So Dang. I was like, I'm just going to, I think I like gaff taped like an extra shirt on it or something. Like just something to cover it up what? and like move on with my life. Dang. And thankfully that one all worked out. Damn. Um, That's crazy. And then before that, Steven, we were talking about it earlier. Uh, which one is it? Drowning in the Music. This yeah. one I totally forgot about. There's one story from this that I do always remember. Uh, or there's a couple from this that I remember. Uh, and so from this one, Steven, we were filming kind of like by a lake in someone's backyard. It was like, yeah, behind a the house. There was like a big pond and some woods that we were filming. In. Uh, and so we were oftentimes in the woods. Uh, our plan at the end was to have Steven get in the lake. Uh, and the problem was that the weather was like 50 degrees that day or something like way too cold. Yeah. So getting in the lake was like a disaster. And all day we were like trying to put it off. And then all day yeah. you were like, hey, if we like got to do it, I'll do it. Like I'm committed to making this thing look good. Oh, and I was kind of like... Don't, don't. This is I kind of wish I went in even further. But, I well, mean, that was not, the issue that we ran into is all yeah. day. And then so finally you're like, I'm doing it. I'm like, cool, if you're going to do it, then we're fucking doing this thing. It's going to look go. great. We're going to do it. Um, I get there and my extension cord was like 10 feet too short to oh. make it from like the house uh. to the lake where I wanted the light to be. So that was part of the reason you couldn't go in deeper is because the light couldn't reach you further. And so from that day I went out and I bought like hundreds of feet of extension cords like spent so much money of like i'm never gonna get to that moment of He's like, like this will never happen again no because it wasn't just that i was short it was that like we had built this and like steven was all the way in the oh. lake and it was like if this dude's gonna walk into like a 30 degree lake like the least i can do is have a fucking extension cord yeah, right. that can reach this thing and make it happen uh, so that was one takeaway but i remember being super impressed by your like commitment to the, the, the craft but even then laying in the lake that day was not probable uh and then as i watched the video back today uh, I remember that, yes, you've been here before. And the last yeah. time you were here, I built a pool down here in the basement <laughs> for built? you to lay in. So I, it was like a wooden frame that I like laid a tarp through. And then we were filling it with water. Uh, one challenge was like I went to like bring rocks in from outside. 
and like just totally underestimated how much like rocks and mud it would take to like fulfill this like thing that I built in my basement. So that took forever. And then filling it with water took forever and we ended up filling it with the washing machine right here. Where we just like oh, had a bucket yeah. in the washing machine. We were filling the machine, Smart. opening the top, taking the bucket out oh, and dumping it. And it was one of those ordeals that I completely forgot about until today. Do you have any memory of this? Do you remember coming um, here and like doing yeah. that whole shoot? Yeah, it was so. I mean, it was definitely very uncomfortable. Um, Constantly laying uncomfortable. Laying in the water uh, <laughs> on top of a concrete floor that I like. I should have put some kind of towel under the tarp so that you weren't laying on concrete yeah. <laughs> in water. But no, he was on his back oh, in water man. on concrete. The things we do for our art, people. I, know. Uh, I believe we were also like because we had trouble with the water depth. I was also like, lifting up the edge of the tarp to make like the thing smaller so the water so bigger. it looks deeper. And then we also were making waves on there, so you're laying on your back. <laughs> On concrete in water oh in clothes. Water splashing <laughs> all over my face. <laughs> With mud and rocks and uh, plants oh in the God. water. Uh, do you remember that? Is that like a, a like a jarring day in your life? Is that just another um, day in the project? Another day. In Pretty the much just <laughs> another day in the project. I mean, it was... I don't know. I, I, I'll i definitely, you oh know... I, I love, you know, trying to... You know, just trying to go all out with, you know, as much as I possibly mm -hmm. can, you know, with kind of creating an image for, you know, the art. Um, I've always been very uh, artsy like that. Um, and just trying to get, you know, the, the image for the band out in general, just like visuals and stuff like that. I've actually been doing some, some video stuff myself. Mm -hmm. um, we did a... a, a um, uh, DIY video over the summer um, for our song How Do You Feel that released at the end of August um, and it came out pretty cool I kind of used I used my GoPro and as well as uh, this old Canon camera that I had mm -hmm. um, and just kind of like when the GoPro when one camera was dying or whatever I would just use the GoPro and then let you know that camera charge, oh, yeah. pretty much. So that's how, cycle. Cycle, yeah. Yeah. how we did that. Um, and then layered the footage, right? Like yeah, we like on top of. Yeah, we um yeah I uh, I edited it and uh, has a nice uh, raw look. To the video. Yeah, yeah it's um, like it's different. I, th yeah. I think it's it, it like you know stuff we would do with you um, are a lot more professional and everything. <laughs> Um, but you know, having a video that has like a more raw look, I feel like definitely like it's, in, it's interesting. You know, adds you know sort of a different thing. Um, Hundred percent. You know, it's, cool to it's interesting both. to have you know, like, different stuff like that. And it was fun to do. Like, um, you know, we kind of memorialized that song and um, the location for that matter, and yeah, just right. um, uh you know, made yeah. it ourselves, yeah, it was, kind yeah, it was of. An interesting and interesting experience. Yeah. Yeah, basically, we were just like, all right, how would we do this with Peter? You know, <laughs> it was like, so we just did a bunch of, you know, we kind of uh, did the same sort of routine, just yep. in our own way, and... Uh, oh, you know, it's kind of funny, too, because... Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. Um, Stephen and I did, a, did sh um, like, extra shots down in the basement for oh, that yeah. that we never used. We used, um, I, I used they some They were overlays. Of, um, they were at the, in the bridge part. Oh, um, so. Kind of like. <laughs> they were used. They're like overlays. Yeah, uh, they were so you see through <laughs> other, you know, footage to see those kind of things. Mm -hmm. For kind of like a trippy sort of effect. Yep. Yeah, there, but um, I feel like it was kind of foreshadowing because it was in the basement and he was under the stairs in the basement. I feel like it's kind of foreshadowing, you know, the video that we did with you. It was like a precursor to what was what was next to come. Yeah, in the, in the series. I think so and, too. And it was like all spur of the moment yep. type. Like um, I said, hey guys, instead of practice this week, you want to <laughs> try to shoot a video ourselves? That's like smart. my house is empty. I'm selling it. And, and they were like, yeah, cool. I'm like, Steven, do you have, like, cameras that we can use for it? And he was like, yeah, so, you know, we handled it like anything else. We set up. We Brought tried to get cool the, lights. the lighting mm -hmm. and figured out how we were going to set up shots. And, you know, it, we had a lot of fun doing it, too. 100%. And it was just, 
and then a day later, <laughs> yeah. th this guy Literally. already has his first edit of the music video out, yeah. and I was like, wow, okay. this look, uh, in a day you did this. Just putting me to yeah. shame in that turnaround and, time. <laughs> but no, it's yeah. just the passion crazy. that he has for, for the music and his vision, and you know, and he, he puts the just... effort in, and it's like, you know, he wants to see it through. And I'm definitely... A perfectionist. I was impressed by it, you know. <laughs> yes, I always, so. you know, I'll never release it. Like, I always like. There's just always something. A lot of times, yep. like, just like ah, that that part could be better. You know, like, it's, it's just like struggle. Especially like when I'm editing something, it's just like I'm I'm never happy until I'm really happy mm -hmm. with it. It's, so it's like, yeah, yeah, that is the constant challenge with yeah, any kind of art is this idea of like it's just never quite done in our head. And there's this idea that if we spend an unlimited amount of time on it, we can make an unlimited amount of progress, which like I don't think is true. I think if I spent unlimited time, like I would be good after a certain point and then I would just fucking ruin it. And or run like into plateau the at some there. point, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious, like I, I like the idea of you guys doing your own music videos. And I always joke to myself that like I'm a big fan of bands doing it. If I sell myself as too big of a fan, I'm going to put myself out of business also. <laughs> so I appreciate that I also get to do it as well. But I think, like, yeah. bands should do more things. Like, I think, like, just because I do a video with you, like, great, awesome, do more. Like, it, more is always better in this world. Exactly. Like, in the context of, like, putting the song out there, it's like the song will do better if there's a visual aspect to it of yep. some capacity. Yep. Uh, and you could have, like, you could have sat on in your bathroom, in your bathtub, and just, like, sang it to your phone and, like, that also still counts like that is also yeah, still content. doing something yeah and yeah. even if it's simple even if it's yeah even no matter what it is even if it's just yeah we have a house this weekend let's do it like steven also does it. individual artwork for each of the songs so mm -hmm. he has it for uh the official audio Single um, releases. if we don't have a yeah, video like, so he does art for each yeah song. like i can That's make huge. i yeah. can make like kind of moving images you know stuff like that i've been messing with a lot of um uh like visuals, visualizer mm -hmm. type videos um, for the songs and stuff. Um, yeah, that's been cool. That's stuff the, like yeah. that. Ultimately, it's a it's a marketing game, uh, yeah. and the marketing is like if there's only audio and there's only like one half of this platform that we can reach, and if we can include mm -hmm. the visual side, it's like no, well, there's seven more places we can put this song, and ultimately it's exactly. about getting people to hear the song, and the more places we can put the song the better it is. Uh, yeah. And so I think it's beautiful. I think you guys are absolutely in the right to keep on doing it. Uh, what advice would you have for other bands who are interested in like making their own video? Like, What did you guys learn? What was surprising? You said you're kind of trying to emulate my day. Yeah, what part of my day was confusing to you? What part of it were you like, damn, how does Peter make this happen? Yeah, what did you guys learn? What would you recommend for other bands? Um, I would say like... Um, it's going to take longer than you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's usually like... Um, the best thing, you know, like you should probably have someone else filming it, obviously. And like, you know, you, um, I mean, for the video that we did, we kind of, we had, um, his ex at the time film some of it. And then on parts where it wasn't all of us, we would also, you know, mm -hmm. film too and help, you know. Um, but we just kind of just like filmed um, multiple takes, like full band, you know, of this of you know, with the song playing through a speaker, angles. Um, yeah, different, more yeah, more different footage angles. is probably better. And know? um, and you know, uh, footage of like each of us individual, you know, with the song playing, and um, and then some like, you know, different some scenes after, you know, kind of just like, um, adding. You know, just some some additives or whatever. I um, think going into it have like a basic concept. Yeah. So you're not just kind of like oil. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. There's nothing easy about uh, directing a video. That's it's definitely sure. <laughs> we, not easy. We, yeah. we um, quickly figured that out. It's like Any sort of location, you know. concept, and setting up the shots. 100. Yeah. percent Yep. I, all that to me goes into like yeah our planning and to me the plan is like we don't have to stick to the plan we just need to have like an expectation yeah. of like okay here's where we're going to start and we're going to get on set and go oh actually this is the better idea what mm -hmm. if we blah, like that's how our brains work as artists uh, but yeah having that foundation is the most important part and it's the least fun part right because it's like has to be you in your own house being like Okay, there's this thing coming up. I have to plan for it. I have to think about it. Like, I just want to get him do it. And it's like, I just no, no, no. Do it. you don't get to do it without this other step of yep. like figuring out how the fuck you're going to do and what you're going to do and what needs to get done that day. Uh, and then it gives you the freedom to be on set and being like, cool, what if? 
yeah. instead of being on set and being like, okay, so <laughs> how's Put the music it in your video? thumbs now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's a, an important part. Uh, is that how you guys are like writing music as well? Are you generally arriving to the studio with stuff kind of set, or is there a lot of writing happening in the studio as well? Um, I did we mostly. I mean, writing. yeah, uh, it's. I mean, we usually always like ha we'll have the lyrics down and oh, everything. It's you like know, eighty percent beforehand. Kind of um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, like, like uh, for like guitar parts, we've um, not been completely sure about, or we've like had like ideas for like uh like lead guitar and just brought Back, them into like, the studio and um when we you know, the producer kind of helped us out um yeah and like even like with our older guitarist um he would like bring you know ideas to the studio and uh the producer would kind of help him and kind of get him into the like a a better direction, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some things he was playing might could have been better or whatever. Our producer was, you know, he's multi, multi, uh, multi talented. Um, he can play, you know, a lot of different instruments. He was he's, in the pop punk band Trophy Wives yeah. for a while. I'm sure you know that. But for people who don't, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's always been very good at uh, giving us. You know, kind of hearing what were the ideas that we have um, and making them better, you know, if, if they can be better. Yeah, constructive criticism. Yes, yeah. exactly. Was it the same process with drums that you arrived at the studio with a lot of them kind of set, or is there much writing in the studio? Um, so, yeah, I usually have, like, a, you know, a, a few different ideas for parts or whatever, and I'll kind of just, like, play, you know, I'll play through, you know, a few different ideas, and Chris will just tell me like straight up what's gonna work, what's not gonna work, what he likes, what he doesn't like, um, and I trust him, you know. So, um, you know, we kind of figure it out from there, and we just pick the best uh, ideas, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I feel like it's always best to kind of be uh, prepared and just, uh, yeah. I like to like have a good solid demo, you know. Yeah. Um, plus, you know, we're going there, and we only have so much time, so it's like gotta bang stuff out. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. one thing I want to start doing is uh, recording, uh, you know, demos at my house, like get uh, the kit set up. You know, we kind of like program drums, but I was yeah. thinking about possibly just getting some, you know, getting the drums mic'd up and uh, doing some demos that way. I think that'd be kind of cool. That's always you know? helpful, like 100 percent. Yeah. I'm all for that. Yeah. Demos are definitely big um, for this, you know, to have for a studio date because you can kind of just lay the the song out and it's you know in time and everything so you know this the producer doesn't have to you know figure out the time mm -hmm. um, or you can send BPM it to them and be like yo this is what we have like yeah and um yeah he definitely likes that just yeah. the day before or whatever yeah. a lot of times we just layer you know over that demo we just play over it and it like helps us you know really get like the song out like um lay it down you know lay the demo down at home and just have that to go off of in the studio mm -hmm. um hell yes uh, i'm transitioning gears a little here uh on the living weary youtube page so i was digging through today just exploring the, the old depths of the beginnings here uh one video i found Stephen, uh was your old band miseries you were playing live at macy's oh <laughs> yeah yeah so the question i'm going to ask you guys in a moment so please get the gears turned about like yeah where's the weirdest place you've played a show i've heard a lot of stories on here about like carpet stores cupcake stores skate parks houses like yeah i'm curious about a show that stands out in your brain uh well i let those cook though steven <laughs> how did you end up playing at macy's um so our um our guitarist in that band at the time um he's honest he's he's always been a really good friend of mine his name's kevin um he's a freaking amazing guitarist uh all about all very you know theoretical about music very very smart okay person um and uh he uh, had worked at macy's at the time and he got he basically like asked his boss or whatever if we could play there 
So, just like yeah. apropos of nothing. On like a Wednesday afternoon, you guys just like something. It looked like, like you were that. literally just like yeah, in the middle of the store. Yeah, it pretty was, much. <laughs> People were just wow. walking by, you know, walking in or whatever. I saw the title. I was like, oh, it must have been like a Christmas party or something. Like yeah, some <laughs> of event that there's some reason that there's a band play, but it looked like yeah, you guys just just sat up and made it happen right yeah. in the middle of the store. That's so funny. Were That's people amazing. walking by? Like, what was the reaction from people who were in the store from the mom who was just there um, with her daughter to buy <laughs> clothes? Yeah, there uh, surprisingly, like, it was, like, a pretty good reaction, I think. Like, there was some people, you know, standing, watching, and clapping and whatnot. Um, I, I, I can't fully remember, but, like, I mean, there probably was some people that kind of just walked by. How long did um, you play for? Um, might have been like 30, like 35 minutes, okay. something like that. Were there um, any other bands? No. That's so, so funny. It was yeah. Steven and two friends with like, uh, yeah, two acoustic guitars. I think maybe you had like shakers or some, yeah, some kind of percussive yeah, instrument. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah, I think it was like, might have been like a, a little like Cahoon type yes. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, was, yeah, it was, it was something. Yeah. <laughs> awesome what are you guys yeah what stands out as yeah craziest place you guys have performed played music something that stands out in your memory from it um i have like like two i guess like kind of related to that okay. um before uh covid um uh the fye for your entertainment at the mall was trying to do this thing where they were going to have live bands um and uh i got reached out to about performing in front of fye with my band, Victim or Victor. Um, and the guy was just basically like, we want to start this thing. We're trying it. Do you want to play? We're like, okay, whatever. Play at the mall. It ended up not being in front of FYE. We were downstairs in front of <laughs> an escalator. Not on a oh, stage. Uh, there was going to be a stage. Not on a stage, though. Just a carpet. <laughs> just, and, like, just uh. randomly... <laughs> playing for the downstairs of the mall and like a bunch of my friends came which was really cool like a bunch of our friends came and supported sure. us and um you know we got our cd up in the up in fye like our first uh cd and um that's awesome then like they set us up set up a table like after and we just like hung out at the table and like that was that they they didn't do anything after that but so we were like the only one who did that but that was super weird but also super cool yeah and yeah, it was like if we were a bigger band like that would have been so sick like yeah. i remember when hot topic used to like have shows they'd have bands come like fallout boy played hot topic back in the day like and so it was something like that it was super like weird but cool <laughs> Please describe being at the bottom of this escalator here and like seeing people walk by and trying to figure and out st what or was like happening. Hearing them like right there and knowing <laughs> they're staring at you. Like yeah. you know, it was uh it was so strange. It was like they're just shopping and now there's a live <laughs> band and um but the people like there were people who stopped who were just you know, shopping and they enjoyed it and that was cool. But it was like it was just a little weird. Hell yes. That yeah. is a lot more similar to the... Ma I felt like the Macy's one was a really hard follow, but that is, yeah, the same mean, ballpark here. Yeah, it was... I'd do it, was it again. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'd do it again. One of mine is kind of recent. Uh, I met a lot of people through playing open mics and just uh, different things, and um, I get a, a message at like 11 o'clock at night. It's like, hey, you want to play at the Whale Tale tomorrow? I'm like, what? What's what's that? I need to know everything and, about the whale tail. Okay, so I didn't know what that was, and I thought it was. Like I know a what joke. that is. <laughs> but there's a fountain across from the train station in downtown New London. You know where the train station is? There's a fountain yeah, of a whale, and I guess that's what it's called. And he's like, "You want to play there tomorrow at this time?" And I was like, well, "Do do they know we're playing? What's what's going on?" And he's like, "No, we're just gonna show up with a bunch of people, and we're just gonna play whatever, and it'll be fun." And I'm like, "We're allowed to do that?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's fine." So we showed up with uh, electronic drum kit, a PA system. Uh, I played guitar. Another guy played guitar. There was a guy in djembe, a guy in congas. Uh, we had a saxophone player, an upright bass, <laughs> and, oh and we had oh full band, and we had an, uh, a bass player. And we played for three hours until our equipment overheated because we were out in direct sun. We weren't under like a canopy or anything. 
So we basically played yeah, until our, right? our amps and PA shut off. And it was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. And it was just wow. really random. That's not how I thought that story was going to end. <laughs> so sick. When you started, we yeah. played until I was like, okay, here's we, the story. We didn't have any plan of what songs we were going to play or anything like that. It was just a jam. spontaneous jam and at a random place that s- someone messaged me the night before. And it was just awesome. That is so cool. Uh, is this like a public, like... Like, are there, is there, like, a lot of foot traffic around, or are you, like... Yeah. It's right across from the train station, Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it's kind of, like, it, it's, like, this, like, monumental part of New London, because they have a fountain, and the whale tail itself sprays the water out, and, like, they have drum circles there sometimes. Yeah, they That's what they I knew do. about. I didn't yeah. know you did that, but, The yeah. guy that, that did it, um, he runs a, a drum circle with someone else um, there. And the town well, they is used just... To. Yeah. It's cool. Uh, the town. I am so it. impressed yeah. that a town allows that to happen. <laughs> like yeah, it, yeah. It was just we walked in like we were supposed to be doing it, and everybody thought it was cool that came by and talked to us, and they're like, "Oh, so do you do this like every week or something?" It's like, no, we just decided to do it last night and showed up. Do you <laughs> think that like, uh, do you think that like the town didn't care, or do you think that you guys just like faked it well enough that everyone just assumed you had a permit and moved on with life? I'm not sure. Um, the guy who organized it, he said that um, things like that were fine because it's, you know, public use. So as long as it's not... New London's kind of an artsy town. Like, they yeah, got stuff going yeah, on. As long as you're not wrecking yeah. anything. They have outlets out there, too, and everything. So yeah, and as long as you're not, like, disturbing yeah, so we the had, peace, we had like, late at night, you're good. Good for them. I uh, I shot a story here, or someone was on here telling a story about how like the mayor came to their skate park show, Yo. and I was like, "That's it! Like the mayor That's should be sick. canceling this, like not showing up and supporting it." Like, no, it's, yes it's he cool should, or well, she uh, should. They uh, should. Uh, in terms of liability, sake. but it's like it's cool. Yeah, no, I, I agree know. that a human should, and like, yeah, these we should be supporting music. Like, it's not hurting anyone. It's you're not, yeah, you're but not no, you don't you don't hear that a lot. But yeah, that is absolutely not what the so the cool. narrative around it is about an official's it. So it's very cool they're supporting that and like nurturing it even. Yeah. That's I love beautiful. It. I love it. What you got it was for a us? lot of fun? Um, so I don't know. Like the most strange show. Hmm. <laughs> uh, like I feel like we played uh some definitely like uh hole in the wall sort of places. Like you know we definitely like there's that one show that was like um it's like, almost like in the back of like a, a warehouse or something. And there was like it was like a really tiny room. Oh yeah, but it, you know it was yep. it was cozy, you know. And it was uh, everybody was packed in there, um, but it was like in the most yep. random spot. How long ago um, was this? It was a while okay. ago. Yeah. Yeah, like. Um, I can't even remember. Twenty. But uh. Nineteen maybe. Yeah, we definitely uh, we played, you know, uh, on some really nice stages, and then you know we played we'll play. Um, you know, wherever for the most part, you know, yeah. if you ask us, yep. you know, we will come out. Uh, you know, we definitely, uh, you know, we enjoy, um, you know, house parties. Like, uh, we did a house show. That was pretty sick. There was one house show we played in uh, Mass one time um, that uh, was, like, crazy. Um, so there was, like, there was, like, hardcore bands in there. It was, like, in someone's living room, and... Um, it was like the, the last band got on and they were like really heavy and stuff and like I think they got like mid set like literally everything was like um like it felt like the room was like moving or like oh, bouncing it probably outside, was. Like yes. bouncing up and yeah. down like yeah, it was crazy was. um people were going nuts and all of a sudden in the middle of the last band set the police arrived <laughs> and like shut it all down <laughs> yeah thankfully at the but, end yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, we almost so. made it. Yeah, <laughs> kind of saves good. everyone in the loadout process. You started earlier. Everyone's kind right. of by then. Like, I think that band was from Florida too. So was I mean, primal? that kind of. S- or is that I, prim- primal? No, camera? no, I don't think. So. I, um, no, I don't think it was them. Oh, okay. I forget. Oh, I forget the band name. This was like so long ago though. Yeah, like probably gonna fly or somewhere. Gonna twenty seventeen. Pull it out. <laughs> Take it yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Go through somewhere the archives. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always fun looking at that stuff. You know, it's like sometimes you forget about like you know yeah. random dates or whatever. And all the time. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we've done so many things. It's uh-huh. hard to keep track of it yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. That's part of my wall over here. I know. I love tickets. that. Like, so I dude, love having the wall. Like, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. About that one. It's. 
Hell yes, friends. We are arriving at our hour here. So we have made it successfully. Uh, oh, yeah. We are. So as this comes out, uh, the music video for Focus will be out in a couple days. Uh, if you're here after release, the video is already out. So go watch that. Uh, the album comes out on what date? Uh, probably the 25th. I, w- I would say Friday the um, 25th. Trial. It's called Trials of My Shattered Mind, and it's uh, yeah, it's very uh, it's a lot about you know, kind of what goes on in my head and just um, the trials of like just um, difficulty that I go through every day and um, the past few years. These songs have you know kind of been recorded in a span of like the past few years and it's kind of just going to be compiled into one album. It's a piece of time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know. So. Hell yes. Looking forward to hearing it. Yeah, it'll be great. Uh, if you hear it before any of this comes out, then I guess go watch some of the old music videos we watched. Go, yeah, go see Steven in a pool in my basement. Yeah. Right where we're sitting, basically. It was probably right where this table was. I was probably phoning from about here. Uh, so yeah, go check that out if you have time. Uh, otherwise, yes, uh, where can people find the band on social media? Where can they follow you guys? Uh, I guess, yeah, I'll go around the old-fashioned way. So Steven, where can they find you on social media? Yeah. Where can they follow you? Uh, um, yes, which we'll look out for. Uh, Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, YouTube. Um, we have music all over, you know, iTunes, Spotify, um, wherever else, uh, Amazon. All the good you know, places. All yeah. the good places. All the streaming yeah. platforms. Um, yeah. uh, where and, can they find uh, your personal social media? Yeah, where are you online, Stephen? Uh, my my personal um, Facebook uh, for my like my personal like. Yeah, where can where can people keep up with you? Yeah, um, Instagram. It's yeah, Instagram. Like, um, you could find me on Instagram. I have a uh, Instagram called Weary Dreams. It's like, um, well, just kind of stemmed off of the band, or like you know, I I might post beats on there. Like, I make beats and stuff like that. Cool. And. Uh, you know, I try to do yeah, a lot of different best. stuff. Um, but, yeah, you can find me there or uh, my Facebook is Stephen Christopher Bossy. So. Cool. Steph, where can people find you? Anything else you want to promote? Any other bands you want to mention here on um, your way out? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, well, uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Steph Lucier. That's my personal. Um, but, yeah, like Stephen said, all our stuff is streaming. You can also find my other band, um, Victim or Victor, on all streaming platforms. We just released our album uh last month congratulations hell yes thank you and um also victim or victor music.com um yeah beautiful. on all streaming platforms beautiful drew what you got for us um i have drewdisorder.com uh you can also find social media and streaming media links for living weary there too um i am drew disorder on basically all all platforms i do solo acoustic and um I, I do write my own music, so um, Drew Disorder on Facebook. Send me a message. Say hi. Absolutely. Brandon, what you got for us, King? Uh, Brandon Lanfear on Facebook and uh, Brandmaster B on Instagram. Hell yes. That's all I got for uh, you. Little links below. Also, yeah, go see the band uh, 1024 in Norwich. Uh, yes, go check them out. Strange Have fun. Brew I'm, Pub. Strange Brew. Shout out Strange yeah. Brew. Thank you guys for coming through. Thanks, I appreciate y'all being here. Yeah. Thank so you. to get that video out there. So to hear the new record. Oh, we're yes. So yeah. Life is yeah. beautiful. Let's have a great day. Yeah.